Hi everyone, today I want to show you how to make your very own faux fur pom-poms to top your hand knitted or machine knitted beanies. They're really really easy to make um, and they're super fun to finish off your beanies with and it means that the whole project that you've made is handmade from top to bottom. So for this project you are going to need faux fur in the colour of your choice. For this tutorial I'm going to be using this amazing rainbow fur. You're going to need some cord. This is 0.8 millimeter waxed thread. You're going to need some stuffing. Now you're going to need something to measure with and either a fabric knife or a craft knife to cut the fur with. I'll explain why in a moment, why scissors won't do. Some scissors, a sharp pointed large eye needle. The sharp point is important. And I use a cutting mat to protect the surface that I'm cutting on when I'm cutting my fur. And last but not least, you'll need a Sharpie to mark out your square on your fur. So without further ado, let's get going. Okay, so a faux fur pom-pom is basically made up of a square of faux fur. Um, when you're cutting faux fur, you can use scissors if you really want to, but it creates a really sharp, stubborn edge that leaves none of this lovely overhang on the fur that you get when you cut through just the backing so i cut through just the backing and i found the easiest way to do this is to use a craft knife or a scalpel you can also use a fabric cutter um, you can get those from craft shops and anywhere that sells um, you know hand crafting tools but by cutting through the backing only you're going to maintain your lovely soft edges of your faux fur rather than if you use scissors if you don't feel comfortable using a sharp instrument then please just use scissors it's not that noticeable in the end product but to me it in my eyes it makes a difference so as you can see here i've used my sharpie and i've measured out and marked out 14 centimeters in the middle of this strip first of all on my fur i cut long strips 14 centimeters wide and then i've worked down and cut them into smaller squares like this one here so when you're cutting i find it easier to use a ruler so that i can hold the faux fur down firmly and i can keep my fingers out of the way so i'm using a scalpel because it's what my husband had to hand and i didn't have to go out and buy a craft knife so what you're wanting to do is to cut through just the backing so pressing fairly firmly down you want to pull your craft knife down along that line and it does take a few attempts to cut through the backing because the backing's quite thick so you can see already i've cut through the backing but not through the whole fur fibers at the opposite side which means that i can part this fur while maintaining the length of the pile all the way around the square So you just want to carefully work your way up, keeping the knife well away from your fingers. And then once you've cut the backing, you can see that it just pulls away and all of these fibres are intact. You get no shedding, there's no mess and you have a square ready to start making your pom-pom. So once you have your square, you want to get your cord and measure out. I do it by laying it around the outside, all the way around, and then giving some extra. You want to have enough to work with, but you don't want too much so that you're wasting. Thread your needle. And when you start, you want to start by pushing your needle in through the outside of the fur so that your tail is hanging out through the fur. So the tail isn't on the inside, you want the tail on the outside. So I like to start my sewing just slightly in from the corner. So pop your needle through and you want to be working about half a centimetre in from the edge. 
So it's about a quarter of an inch if you're in the States. Leave a fairly decent tail because this is what you're going to cinch up with. And then you want to work a running stitch all the way around the edge. Keep your running stitches quite small. You want to aim for them to be less than a centimetre. And you want to make sure they're fairly even. And you just want to tack a running stitch all the way around the edge. Make sure you don't get tangled like I have. I'm using black thread so that you can see better, but if you're using pale fur like this, you can use white thread if you want. It doesn't really matter because once the pom-poms tied together and it's tied onto a hat, you can't see the threads anyway. And then when you get back round, you want to put your stitch, your last stitch. So again, the yarn is poking on the outside of the fur, not on the inside. You can pop your needle to one side for a moment. And then what we want to start to do is to cinch it closed. And to do that, you need to pull these strings. And you'll notice that when you pull them, the running stitch just starts to pull tight and to pull the whole thing together. As it comes together, you can just help encourage the fur to not get trapped on the inside so that it comes neatly out. Because you don't want all this nice fur stuck on the inside of the pom-pom, you want it outside. Then once it's part way cinched and you've got a nice opening here, you can start stuffing it. So how much you stuff your pom-poms is entirely up to you. I like them firm not too not too solid again personal preference so just stuff as much as you want and what you can do as you're stuffing is to pull tight and make the hole smaller and then just poke more stuffing in through a smaller hole once i get to about here i like to tie a single knot because it just helps when you're cinching it together you can tug this slightly and with a waxed thread stops it on the opening up quite as quickly i tried with unwaxed thread and i found that my pom-poms were popping straight open so by using waxed thread it just means that the knot opens itself slightly slower and it gives me a little bit more time to work to try and get the double knot done i'll show you in a moment so i'm going to pop a little bit more stuffing into this what you can do as you're stuffing it is you can start to Push it into the nooks and crannies like you would if you were stuffing an amigurumi. Oops. You don't want to overstuff it because it will just pop open when you're trying to tie it closed. Okay, so I'm happy with how much stuffing is in that now. And what I'm doing is I'm just, as I'm pulling tight, I'm just pushing the stuffing in so that this hole closes up nicely. Don't worry if there's a bit of a hole still, because I'll give you a trick in a minute how I finalise it all, but what you want to do is pull it as tight as you can. Make sure, if you can, that no fur is stuck. When I'm doing these off camera, I pop a pom-pom in between my knees to allow me to hold the tension on this knot so that I can get the second knot done. So 
So I'm just doing another knot to turn my single knot into a double knot so that it doesn't open up again. There, so I pulled that nice and tight. Then I'm just going to ease out any trapped fur from around the knot. So once I've eased out the fur, I'm going to do one more knot just to secure that initial knot. And I don't know if you can see, but I've still got a small hole in the middle of the pom-pom. I can normally get it tighter than that when I'm not filming. But don't panic. If you have a hole like that, what you then do anyway, even if you have no hole, you can see that your strings are on one side of your pom-pom. And when you're tying a pom-pom onto a hat, you would ideally want the strings to be equally in the middle. So what I do is I thread my needle back on and I go back into the pom-pom and out through the fur. Make sure that you're catching the fabric of the pom-pom and that you're not just skirting through the edge of the fur at the edge of the hole. You want to go, you know, half a centimetre down into the actual weave woven fabric on the back. And then we are going to tie three tight knots. Make sure this, the fur's not trapped in there as much as we can. One. Two. And three and then you can see there that the hole that i had now that i've added that extra knot has pretty much disappeared and then the last but not least what i do is i trim the strings so that they're equal i like to include a button with any pom-poms that i sell it just means that when people want to attach it with a button, they haven't got to go out and source their own button. button. These are just um, some buttons off Amazon that I found. And I just feel like it's a small gesture that means that when the pom-pom arrives, it's nice because they haven't got to go hunting around for anything to attach it with if they like to attach it with a button. So there we have it. Finished faux fur pom-poms. And I'm really enjoying seeing all the different colour variations that come out using this unicorn fur. Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know in the comments what you think. And if you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you for another tutorial soon. Bye.